What's up boys, it's Nick from Team Table 501 here. I'm the king of the scrubs and today I'm bringing you my updated semi-budget Salaman Great Deck profile for the new October ban list. And like I do every other video, I have to apologize for my lack of an activity. I just have not had any interest in Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I was barely attending locals, I was selling off a bunch of stuff, it was just... I just had no interest to play the game, because every every match felt like, okay, did you open your super busted card? Okay, the game's over. Or it's like, oh, you opened a, you opened a hand trap and you opened two monsters orcas combo me? Okay, I lose. Uh, now, the ban list has come, some things have happened, and uh, I kind I really like where Salamander Great's position right now. You know, I think it's a deck that's super flexible, you can change around a lot of the cards in the deck, and it still performs the same. You've got, you know, you know your one linear game plan, but the cards surrounding it change, and that's what I like about the deck. You might have your one linear game plan of just, like, end on the same board every turn and recycle your resources, but the cards surrounding it and the way that you have to get to that end linear game plan is super interesting to me. <laughs> As always, if you don't want to hear me ramble on, the link to the deck list is in the description down below, along with my Facebook and Twitter. Go follow me there. I post some cool shit. And uh, I call it semi-budget because there are a few expensive cards in here, but for for about like 125, 150 bucks, you can build this deck. And 80 of it's one card. But anyway, without further ado, the deck list. So not much has changed since the last format, really. You know, it's a lot of the same old, same old. So uh, for the monsters, one gazelle, three spinny. Three Foxy, this is like the norm. These are the cards that like help you do the thing. Two Jack Jaguar. I tried out one, but there were still a lot of people running around with like Call by the Graves and Shark Cannons and DD Crows and etc. And just ways to get this card off the board. Or like it would be on my board under my Sunlight Wolf, and they would just like uh like I played against ABC and they busted it. Then I had no Jack Jaguar in my deck. Also, because I'm playing Pot of Desires, I want to have the second one in my deck just in case I manage the first one. That way, I can still full combo my opponent. Uh, and like, even if you like opening this with Buffalo is insane. It's just like literal free value. And then for the last level fours, uh, one Falco, one Foul. These cards are great. Falco is actually insane because it just resets will every turn. Like, and that's how you beat. Uh, Nibiru and stuff is you just like send Falco off your gazelle on the fifth summon, you get Nibiru, and then this, uh, and then you activate Will, summon Falco, link away the Falco, set the Will back to your board, and then you just like do that for the rest of the game. And Foul actually comes up a lot now, being able to freeze off Crescendo or just like the random Sky Striker spell. That way you can like go off and do your thing. Three Buffalo, this card's insane. Don't play Debug, card's trash. <laughs> And as you'll see in the deck list, there's two C Archiver, but in the profile they're backup secretaries. I just don't own C Archiver, unfortunately. I thought I did. Went through my bulk and I couldn't find it. Um, and just to play casually with my friends, I just have secretaries. But uh, they are C Archivers. For those of you who don't know what that card does, it's a level 3 water cybers. Uh, and its effect is, when a monster is summoned to a zone that a Link monster points to, if this is in your graveyard or your hand, you can summon it for free, but you have to banish it when it leaves the field. So it acts as another copy of Spinning in a lot of circumstances. It's just, it's a card that you can open and it extends your combo, or you can draw it off buffer low or add it off mining, and it still does the same thing. And the fact that it's every turn just means like it helps you climb the Link ladder, and it, do it doesn't cost you a card. You just have to like summon, and you're going to do that to combo 99% of the time. This card's great to pitch off mining and buffalo too. So I wasn't super impressed with C Archiver at first, but the more I play it, the more I just think you have to play it. And then the hand traps. This is where the budget part of that comes in. So three ash is pretty obvious, but I don't own Phantasme, I don't own Nibiru, I don't own Impermanence. Those cards are just way too expensive, and I don't really care enough about the game to buy them. So currently I'm playing two Ghost Ogre. This is probably the weakest card in my deck, but a lot of the combo decks now have linchpins that you can hit with Ghost Ogre that you weren't previously able to. Like now against Orcus, you can hit the Galatea and that can probably end their turn. Against Striker, you can hit the multi-roll, game's over. In the mirror, hit Stelly over Gazelle. You can't really hit something like well with this because they're just gonna banish the Bay Links. Um, it's also just like a level three, so. Uh, and then really the spicy card in my deck, two main deck copies of DD Crow. This card's fucking nuts right now, believe it or not. Like, there are so many decks that just have one-card combos that focus on their graveyard. Having the ability to interrupt that combo is fantastic. And, like, the best part about DD Crow is that it's never really dead. Like, against Thunder and stuff, Ghost Ogre's dead. Uh, DD Crow really isn't, because you can hit the, uh, the Red Eyes when it hits the graveyard, when they do the Guard Dragon combo. So you can just, like, banish Red Eyes. And now you've just, like, shot off a big part of their extend extending. And this card's insane in the mirror. Just, like, being able to DD Crow the Spinny so that they can't combo, or DD Crow their Jaguar, or you can just hit Gazelle. 
It also hits any card, which is crazy. So I played against a striker player at locals the other day. They went, <sighs> they went engage for drone. Drone, Kagari, get back engage. I need to code the engage in the end of their turn. They like went Shizuku, added engage, and then next turn they died. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny. So that's it for the hand traps. That's it for the monsters. On to the spells. Three mining. This is the most expensive card in the deck. It's very unfortunate, but you just need this card to play this deck, really. You could, in theory, play the deck without this card, but it's going to be a lot less consistent. I think if you're not playing Signet Mining, you have to play a more going second OTK-based build of the deck, because you just lack the consistency that this deck has because of this card. So, yeah, this card is just absolutely insane. Being able to add Gazelle or add anything you need. Like, if your hand's already great, just get a Buffalo and dig for your, your trap cards. If your hand's mediocre, get, get a starter. Like, it just does everything. And then the best card in the deck, 3 Will, the Salamangrate. This is your only way to play around Nibiru, and it's just another extender that is searchable. So, what happens most of the time, or at least the play pattern I've been following, is like, summon Gazelle, send this, so they wolf it back, and then not make any more summons for the turn. That way, if they do Nibiru you during the end phase on your next turn, you can just activate Will, summon a summon wolf back, and then you can just like go off from there. Or, you can put the Mirage Dalio in the extra monster zone, and then your Jack, or then your, uh, you summon the Gazelle, send Jack Jaguar, and then you make Sunlight Wolf, and that's summon number five. So if they Nibiru you then, you can activate Will, get your Sunlight Wolf back, and then proceed to go off from there. You just can't leave with the Jack Jaguar, that's all you have to do. But, because that's the thing, it's like if you make the Sunlight Wolf, then they're kind of forced to Nibiru you there, because otherwise you just get priority, and then you can just like get your Gazelle back for free, which is crazy. Uh, and even if you're not getting the beer, this card's just great. It's a Soul Charge, or it's a Reborn, and you can set it with Falco, which is like how I... That's how you grind out Striker and stuff in the mid to late game, is you just have Falco set this every turn until your opponent concedes. Uh, and then one Circle, one Sanctuary, the Norm. Uh, this is the actual best card in my deck, though. Three main deck copies of Super Polymerization. My, my, my current build of the deck is based more so on the ability to just blow my opponent out of the water water rather than consistently do one mediocre thing every turn and this is the definition of that like this card is absolutely fucking insane if your opponent doesn't play around it just like you see sunlight wolf you see two stack cards you know one of them's a trap you never play around super Paul. you're always playing around the trap so what you can do is you just go activate super poly fuse your monster my monster violet chimera and then the next turn, you can just have Jack Jaguar put the Violet Chimera back in your extra decks. This is always live. Uh, and against like the combo decks, you can just make Starring Venom, and they usually lose at that point. Because you can just smack Starring Venom into their biggest guy, have it wipe away the rest of the things that didn't get super polyed, and then full combo there. Because it costs you a card and a half. And this card is also just very good at giving the deck aggression. Being able to activate this, make Violet Chimera, and attack in a battle phase and kill your opponent is absolutely insane. So, yeah, play Super Poly. This card's fucking busted. It's way better than Nibiru in the main. I swear to God. Uh, double Desires. Consistency. Not entirely sure how I feel about this card, but... Trying it out for now, it's been fine. Uh, two enemy controller. Kind of really want to make room for three. This card's absolutely busted. Like it's it's similar to Super Poly, whereas if your opponent doesn't play around it, they just get punished by it. Also gives the deck aggression. Also just lets you stay alive before some sort. You can just like activate this and switch their monster to defense mode. It can't attack you that turn, obviously. But like really, what you want to do is you want to go like it helps you play around floodgates. And it also is like lets you get clear problematic monsters. What you can do is you can like normal summon Spinny, activate this, steal their thing. Uh, or, like, you'll go spinning to Bailinx, summon the spinning back, activate this, tribute this, uh, Bailinx, take your dude, and then link off into, like, Hita and go from there. So, yeah, if I can make room for a third copy of this card, I think I would. This is fantastic. And then one Roar, one Rage, the trap cards. You banish them off Desires, it's whatever. These cards aren't really here to be searched. If you draw them, great. If not, whatever. These are more here to solidify your position once you've broken the board. That's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards under the extra deck. Ghost Ogre and 7% off. And then uh, it's pretty standard for the salad lineup. It's 3 Bailinx, 3 Wolf, 2 Heat Leo. Uh, I know some people want me to play the 3rd Heat Leo, but don't do that. You don't need the 3rd Heat Leo. You have so much aggression in the form of like Econ and Super Poly that you don't need to be aggressive. That aggressive, at least. Hito, the second best card in my extra deck. Phoenix to protect my board and works well with Sunlight Wolf. The best card in my extra deck is obviously Borolo Dragon. This card just breaks apart combo boards so easily. Like, Will lets you make this incredibly easy. 
You can just, like, break apart a Thunder board, break apart an Orcus board. Like, this in Super Poly breaks, like, any board in the game, because it's a dark. So, like, you can just activate Super Poly and go, like, fuse, 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 bleh. Or, like, what you can do is you can, like, play the... I thought about playing the, uh, the big print of plant, the thing that takes three. So you can, like, use Will, bring back a, a Heat Leo, and then, like, summon two extenders. Like, you can go, like, Spinny Foxy this, Super Poly the whole board, and now there's, like, nothing. And you have a 3k beater that can't be targeted, which is, like, really cool. But this card's also just really good at breaking up our boards. I'm not playing the Update Jammer package, because I'm playing Super Poly, and I have no room in my extra deck for it. Because I think main deck Super Poly is just insane right now. Uh, the one Stalio, the one Dweller, you don't need to play more than one Stalio. You can recycle it incredibly easily, and Dweller's here just for turn one combo plays. And then the Super Poly targets are Violet Chimera and Starving Venom, for very obvious reasons. That's it for the extra deck. On to the side deck. The side deck's very experimental right now. I'm not entirely sure what I want. Uh, but just, like, I chose, like, a bunch of cards that are good and just put three of them in my side deck, so. Three Lancia, yeah, very good against Thunder and Orcist. You know, also can come up against Rogue decks. Three Banker Tops. This card's just very good. Like, even if you're not using it to spot remove something, it's just a big beater. Like, in Control Mirrors, like, against Geist or Striker, or, or not Striker, like, Geist and Guru and stuff, they have to answer this. And if they don't, they just die, because it just, like, smacks them. <laughs> All their monsters are really tiny. Three mind control. This card's insane going second. Uh, just being able to pick apart boards, and it's not once per turn. So what I did in the mirror was I went activate mind control, target your sunlight wolf. They negated it with roar, and then I went second mind control, take your sunlight wolf, normal spinny, make heat leo, break your last back row, which was a uh, which was an infinite impermanence, and like heat leo to my heat leo OTK you, which is like really nuts. Three twin. Going second against back row and Pendulum. I'm, I'm not sure if I both going against... Like, most of the time I want this going first against Pendulum. But really, like, if you want to host Pendulum or Striker, then there's two anti-spell and an order in my side. Like, these cards just can... These cards are just insane. Like, if you draw them against Striker or Pendulum, you pretty much just win. They're also kind of nuts in the mirror, too. Because a lot, a lot of your powerful cards, like Will and Mining and Poly and stuff, are spell cards. So, what I'll do is, depending on what my opponent's Game 1 configuration looks like... Uh, if I see that they're playing, like, Econ and Super Fly and stuff, I'll board into these going first. Because sometimes you'll just, like, Sunlight Wolf Dweller and a Trap, and they lose. Sometimes Sunlight Wolf and a Trap is good enough, because you can just have Bailings protect your Sunlight Wolf, and then the Trap just shuts off any extension that they might have. Unless they opened, like, Spinny Foxy, and at that point, then they win. There isn't really any much you can do about that, so. But yeah, these cards are insane. So anyway, that's going to do it for my semi-budget Salaman Great Deck Profile for the new ban list. Like I said, I think this deck's in a really good position right now. Super Poly is just one of the most insane cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I think you should be capitalizing on it in any possible way. Uh, there are a couple of cards that are suspect in here, like Pot of Desires, I'm not sold on. The Ghost Ogres and TD Crow should probably be something else. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Uh, also, one thing you might have noticed is that I'm not playing Call by the Grave. I think that that card, that card stock has gone down because we're in a new format, so there's probably going to be less hand traps running around. People are just going to try to like do the biggest, dumbest thing they can. I'm sure as the format solidifies more and uh, as more people figure out what's going on, the Call by the Grave will work its way some or will work its way back into the deck somehow. For right now, I'm not, I don't think it's necessary, but obviously, if you want to play it, go out and play it. But yeah, that's going to do it. Like I said earlier, decklist is in the description. And yeah, go follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I post a bunch of cool shit. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Nick from Team Tipple 501, and get good scrubs. See you next time.